What are you looking at there, Professor? Well, Chloe, it's getting to be the time of year again. That time of year for what? Why, E3 of course. Oh, I thought E3 wasn't that big a deal anymore. Well, even though a few key studios won't be attending this year the event is still relevant to the gaming industry. To a certain extent, the Expo needs to evolve to keep up with the changing times. You mean, like the fact most studios can reach a wider audience via YouTube, Twitch, and social media? Correct. The Entertainment Software Association, or ESA, I think understands this so days have been set aside to open E3 to the public. I really don't see the point in it, though. YouTube has been awash with jailer leaks and early announcements. Yes, I've seen them. This is exactly why E3 needs to change, because its relevancy as a platform for its intended purpose is diminishing. What was the original intended purpose of E3, anyway? Good question. I'm pretty hungry, let's talk about this over lunch. My treat. Okay. So, what was the original purpose of E3? Well, originally it was held so video game publishers and accessory makers could introduce and advertise upcoming games and game-related merchandise. But, they can do that now with YouTube and social media. That's true. That is exactly why I said E3 needs to change. Right now it is still somewhat relevant, but for the very reason you've pointed out it is losing that relevance quickly. So, what can they do to change that? What the ESA is already starting to do beginning this year. Some time has been set aside to make the expo open to the public. Previously, you had to prove you worked in the video game industry to attend. But, just like what's happening with newspapers, changing technology is making E3 redundant. Well, of course, YouTube, social media, and journalist bloggers are able to deliver the news much faster than newspapers. In some cases, even faster than television. True, like the big earthquake on the East Coast a few years ago. It started in Virginia, and people in New York City learned about it minutes before the tremors reached them because of Twitter. The 2011 quake in Japan is also another case where new technology was faster than the mainstream media. Well, Japan was one of the most earthquake-prepared countries on Earth when it happened. If the ground hadn't sunk down 30 feet, then the protective dikes would have made that tsunami less destructive. True, but let's get back on topic. Okay. So, changing technology like the ubiquity of YouTube and social media is making E3 less and less relevant. Opening their doors to the public might help, but there are already a lot of big events that are public too. So, what can the ESA do to keep E3 relevant against that much change? That's not an easy question to answer, and I think even the ship of understanding would give us more than one. Opening the event to the public is one way, but as you said there are already a lot of public events. Gamescom, PAX East, PAX Prime which is now called PAX West, and so on. And, the cost of attending E3 is also rather high for big studios. Annual franchises are eating up most the triple, A studios budgets. Game budgets these days rival Hollywood blockbusters, so the lion's share of the revenue is going to the next big game leaving less for other stuff. Like elaborate stages and booths at E3, which rarely get seen by the public, and are often surpassed by their booths at other public events. Well, that's the rub, there are a lot of other events open to the public allowing game studios to reach the audiences that actually matter directly. Wow. This really is a much harder problem to solve, isn't it? Well, game studios that attend E3 must be members of the Entertainment Software Association. The ESA could impose rules, which govern how much information attendees can let leak before the expo. Of course, they must take care not to be too heavy-handed with those rules, or else they risk alienating companies from attending altogether. What about using E3 partially as an event to recruit new talent into the gaming industry? If there's one thing the gaming industry needs, it's fresh blood with new ideas. They need new visionaries who can think outside the box, and right now they just don't have that. That's a great idea.
or, better yet, E3 could host events that help young, up-and-coming independent developers get a business off the ground. Maybe even teach them how to best use crowdfunding, and leverage social media. E3 could become less about showing off the next big thing, and more about elevating the gaming industry by cultivating new talent. Imagine, the next Will Wright, John Carmack, or Sid Meier could be out there somewhere just waiting to be discovered. E3 could bring together young developers with new vision, who would build the next gaming giants. Giants that see the state of the gaming industry today, and know what mistakes to avoid. A new generation of triple, A, studios that won't fall into the same trap the current ones are in now. The Game Developers Conference already does some of this now, though. That's very true, which is why E3 should also be a celebration of video games not as a commodity, but as art. A celebration of what makes video games so great, and that's the experiences they give us. I've got another one. Esports is becoming a really big thing. Why not also make E3 the venue for a large international esports event? Maybe even a way for teams and leagues to recruit new players. Yes, there's so much the ESA could do. Whether they have the foresight to actually do it is the question. They are an organization which, to a certain extent, still has its head in the 1990s. Their opinions on matters like DRM and licensing are still rather outdated. Like many such organizations, they are run by older people, some who never had a background in games before, who can't think outside of the box. Maybe it's the right time for indie studios to band together and create a new organization that best represents the new attitudes the gaming industry needs. Maybe. Or, some of the older people running the ESA need to step aside and allow younger people with new ideas to take over. That would work too. Even though some of the big companies won't be attending this year, they'll still be holding keynote speeches. Very true, and there are few new players in the business holding keynote events. Like Bethesda and Square Enix. Yes, two companies that have grown powerful enough to rival the big three, EA, Activision, and Ubisoft. And, while a lot has been leaked so far, I'm sure the big companies still have a few surprises in store. That's likely true. Look at the Final Fantasy VII announcement last year. There's been rumors for years, but nobody saw that coming. E3 is in trouble, but not in such dire trouble that it will disappear entirely next year. It would take something big, like a big global financial collapse to do that. The thing is, Professor, given what's going on in global finance that could realistically happen, and sooner than people want to believe. Sadly, you aren't wrong about that. Only time will really tell. Who the hell are you? Someone you don't want as an enemy. You're Chloe's mom, so I'm only going to give you a warning. Stay away from the professor. I've heard of you. You're my little girl's lesbian lover. And, your point is... No, I'm bisexual so it doesn't bother me any, but I have a job to do. So, scamper home little girl. I'd hate to break my daughter's heart by breaking your neck. You can't kill what's already dead. Vampire, huh? Should've guessed. And here I thought you were just a Wednesday Addams cosplayer. Then, you know a fight with me would be very one-sided. You aren't my first vampire, sugar. I've heard, and those weren't trained knights of the Crimson Circle. Monster Slayers, can't say I've run into one of you before. You wouldn't be alive, standing here in front of me if you did. Whatever the executive is paying you, my order can pay you triple. All you have to do is walk away, and never come back. There's far more at stake here than money, little girl. Are you talking about the death threat against Chloe he's hanging over your head? His toadies should be finding the bodies right about now. All the mercs he put in place to watch her, they were delicious. Who, who, are you? Amina Lucard, daughter of one of the most powerful vampires that ever existed. You humans call him Vlad the Impaler, though your history about him was a fabrication to hide his true nature. You, are the Nightmare Queen. I'm, I'm a bit surprised you've heard of me. Everyone in the underworld has heard of you. I'm no longer the bloodthirsty monster my father was. 
the crimson circle showed me a higher calling. And, that is protecting people, and especially the ones we love. So, I'm telling you now, give up this course, it will only lead to the inevitable. I may be no match for you, but you have no idea the kind of power he's about to unleash. He's on the Order's radar now, his days are numbered. We know what he's up to, so the Order is intent on stopping him. The Crimson Circle is going after the Executive. Holy crap. So, you understand now he won't be a problem much longer. This is an opportunity for you, maybe. One to get your life back, your real life, with your daughter. She'll never accept someone like me, not with all the things I've done. You might be her mom, but you don't know her too well. The Chloe I know is far more forgiving than that. I need some time to think about this. That's fine, I'll take you to one of the Order's safe houses. You'll be safe there until you decide what you want to do. Okay. Sir, we have a problem. The men we placed to watch the Nightshade Girl. They were found, all dead, piled in an alley near one of our safe houses. Scrawled in blood on the wall were the words, The Circle Knows. If this circle is what I think it is, we've got a very big problem. I doubt she'll be completing her contract, assuming she's even alive. Yes, I agree sir. It is time we called on them for this operation. Then, I'll make the call right away. <laughs>